Welcome, in front of me is a Xiaomi Redmi Pad 2 Pro and today I'll show you how you can go through the setup process of this device. So, to get started, when you boot up your tablet for the first time, you will be presented with this screen right over here. Now we only have one option to click the arrow and then choose your language. You want to find your desired language from the vast list of well, basically every language you can choose from. Um, now for me, it already selected English, but God forbid I would ever want to be considered as a UK citizen or someone who lives there. So I'm going to go out of my way to look for English that isn't in UK. Uh, there we go. Australia. Oh, actually, you know what? India sounds even better. Um, at this point, India is most likely actually land of the free, unlike UK. Anyway, moving on. You know what? I can also live in India. I don't care. About what? 30% of people do? Uh, but I will point it out in a different way. If you want to have best consumer rights, you might want to choose something that is uh, in the European Union as your region, as this will basically force companies to abide by our rules, or theoretically should. I haven't actually ever checked it, because at the moment we don't have anything to check it. Uh, but once uh, Apple finally complies with what the European Union is forcing them to, I will be able to actually check it. Right now, they're just being a little bitch, kicking and screaming, and trying to just take fines uh, up their ass uh, till they won't, and they will comply. Or European Union will remove them from Europe. Uh, so, at that point, I'll be able to check if this actually matters. Uh, but in any case, for now, I'm going to assume like it does, so I can search for something like Poland. There we go. Perfect place. Moving on, we have terms and conditions. We have uh, user agreement and privacy policy. Now you can tap on each one of these BS uh, things and uh, see what you're agreeing to. And then just select the box right here at the bottom. Or you can be like me and never read a single word of it and agree to it anyway. It's not like these devices have any security, privacy or anything like that. So I don't really care uh, two shits about what kind of BS they're claiming in, the, uh, in their legal documents. Anyway, moving on, we have set up using another device. Now, let me just grab another device. You can see on your device, you should get a pop-up like this, assuming it has a Google account. Uh, so here you can select set up, and this will basically copy over your things like your Google account that is signed in on that device that I just pulled up. It will get moved here, along with basically any data that it is on that Google account, like contacts, uh, downloaded applications, and so on. Now keep in mind, this will only be limited to anything that Google can hoover up as data. Um, other than that, any kind of documents and stuff like that, yeah, those are on you. You can transfer it yourself. Uh, because obviously Google won't be downloading that. Uh, and any app that you have downloaded outside of Play Store is not part of that. And uh, yeah, it's ba it basically means that any data that Google can store can be transferred, but the ones that they don't bother storing or they just don't have a way to store it because it came from the seas or whatever, uh, they're not going to bother actually transferring it over with the system that is designed to transfer. Moving on, we have connect to network and we have um, all our Wi-Fi show up. Now, this is optional. You don't need to do so. We can actually skip it. And then we have a uh, set screen lock. So I do want to point out, usually you get a pop-up when you choose to not connect to your network that you won't be able to sign into a Google account. A date and time won't be set automatically and you won't be able to restore uh, data from a... Actually, I think I just mentioned that. So no backup, uh, restoration, no date and time and uh, no software updates. There we go. Um, so those are the three different things that you usually get as a pop-up when you choose to skip this. Um, here we didn't get any of that, but anyway, moving on, we have screen lock and we have two different ways of protecting our device. We have the uh, screen lock, which consists of pin pattern or, or password, and we have the face unlock. Now for face unlock, you will also be forced to select a screen lock as biometrics aren't 100% reliable. And in a time where your tablet decides to have a sissy fit and not recognize you because uh, you decided to get a new haircut uh, or, I don't know, some reason, uh, you will be left with unlocking your device with a pen pattern password, which obviously will not change based on, uh, on a whim of a device. 
I can also not protect your device at all. Typically, I wouldn't recommend this, uh, but this is a tablet, so it's a little bit re less kind of important, I would say. Usually, you don't store very personal information on your tablet, so if you're like me, you're probably just gonna binge watch Netflix or whatever, uh, watch YouTube. So this isn't as important to protect, uh, but your phone you should definitely protect. Now moving on, we have Google services. Now here we have services like use location, allow scanning, and send user and diagnostic data. Now these all are basically just piece of shit spyware. Now you can turn them off and uh, it basically will do nothing in reality. Uh, there's also another problem that certain applications will require location. So if you do that, um, you will try to launch some applications and they will basically tell you we won't function till you enable this because we need to know where you are. For what reason? I don't fucking know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, good luck if you want to stay, well, anonymous, let's say. At this point, it's not possible, really. Or soon it won't be. Um, in any case, I also want to point out that for people that, that value their privacy, obviously Android isn't the way to go, uh, but turning these off actually means uh, absolutely a fall. And just to give you an example of that, if you enable airplane mode, at least on my phone as an example, I don't, this should have it too, but I just assume it does. So airplane mode is supposed to turn off basically every kind of thing like Wi-Fi, mobile data, Bluetooth, and so on, right? And even if you turn these off and you were to take the device with you, yeah, that device still knows where exactly you are. Now, it you might have disabled the, the use location and uh, scanning and send user and diagnostic data. So number one, the device shouldn't be sending your data where you are located. Number two, it shouldn't know where you are located. Uh, but um, that extends to things like Wi-Fi and GPS right here in location. It doesn't extend to, for instance, Bluetooth signals and radio waves, as an example. Which means that the piece of shit device still knows exactly where you are, and this is just a what could be best considered um, as a general guideline for Google to maybe consider following. And then can, they can then say, yeah, cool, we'll consider, uh, we're done considering, we're gonna get it. So, um, we're in a world where data is money, uh, don't ever consider that this toggle will prevent the company that is trying to make as much money as possible, they will say, oh, you know what, okay, I guess we won't be gathering and selling this data. So yeah, take that with a grain of salt. There is reasons why, uh, as an example, criminals that take their phones, even though they take out a SIM card and turn everything off, are still found because of their phone. So anyway, moving on, we have basic settings. Um, here we have, again, location. Uh, automatic system updates, send user and diagnostic data. Now these are from uh, Xiaomi now. So we, or at least I talked about the Google ones that we've seen on the previous page. These are from Xiaomi. And here's another couple of things that are just absolutely uh, garbage. Uh, one of them being the crown prince of, uh, of this is this, personalized ads. Now I want to, before I toggle it off, I just want to kind of point this out. Oh look, I can turn off location. I can turn off automatic updates. You can turn off even send user and diagnostic data or experience programs. Um, what happens if I try to turn off personalized ads? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you, whoa. Are you sure you want to do that? It's such a freaking good option that uh, basically will spy on you, will listen to what you talk about and uh, check what you write. So we can then give you relevant ads based on that because F your privacy. No, piss off. Um, so yeah, turn that garbage off right away. There is no reason why you should ever give this data away. And my stance is, on this thing is, they are basically gathering your data so they can sell it and make money on it. Why the shit would you ever give away something that someone else is making profit off of for free? If they want to make profit off of it, you sure as shit should see a cut of it because it's your freaking data. So turn this off and unless companies decide to actually share that, uh, don't ever turn it back on. And uh, I'm gonna also turn that off and uh, this and this. By the way, one more thing, the automatic system updates. Um, this is the first time I'm gonna mention this, uh, but 
And turning those off um, will obviously prevent your device from being updated. But this only extends to things like the Android. Now, if you are in the loop right now for Android, uh, you probably heard that Google wants to implement this uh, bullshit where they're just going to prevent you from being able to install applications from third-party sources, applications that are unsigned. Now, their claim is that, well, we're doing that because we're so nice. And because there is so much malware out there in applications, we're just trying to prevent you from, from this. And uh, typically, uh, when you try to install an application already, you get a pop-up that this is an un, uh, like applications from an unknown source. And to install it, you need to enable the actual ability to install from unknown sources. But that wasn't enough. Now, they're bullshit excuses that it's for your pri not privacy, but for your security because there is malware. Uh, but uh, let's be honest, they're bullshit. No one is buying. Because if that was true, they can first start off with their damn backyard. Their app store is filled with shit. And maybe you should first try to clean that out before you go claiming shit like, oh, we're doing this for your security because there's so much... Clean your own store first and then shut the fuck up. Um, so that's one thing. And number two, uh, they then made a statement following it up because of outrage that this won't prevent you from installing third-party applications. Oh, really? Oh, really? Will you allow me to install Revenge or CloudStream? Uh, because as far as I can tell from your own statement, these applications will require to be signed. And surprisingly enough, for security purposes, uh, Google will be making profit off of that. Because of course they will. So it's funny that they're protecting you by making more money. And that is basically designed to force to applications uh, that they wouldn't want to nev never be certified. And if they want, they will need to pay Google money to be signed. Without that, you won't be able to install them. So don't buy whatever Google is uh, forking, um, the, the load of shit. It's all in the name of profit and removing your security. If they wanted to actually give you um, a security um, from malware, I, I don't know. You could implement things like antivirus. Crazy freaking idea. But anyway, uh, moving on. Oh, we have some more. Uh, show me whatever. I'm, you can go over these. Next, we have turn on, uh, turn on parental control. Uh, this is completely up to you. It's self-explanatory, so I'm not even going to go into it. Now, moving on, then we have uh, font settings. We have only two options, so not much. And they're very similar in terms of how they look like. The only varying size and spacing. So choose whichever one you want. For some reason, the bigger one is recommended. Yeah, I'm going to ignore that. Next, we have gestures. Uh, so by default, it will try to get you to use gestures. Uh, it tells you also how to use them through the couple different images or mm, animations. And then when you press on next, you actually have the option to change it if you don't want to use gestures. At least I believe you do, right? Or I missed the button that was there. I think I missed the button. And I can't go back. So there is probably somewhere a blue button. Uh, where it tells you something about navigation. You can tap on it and then change it to, to buttons if you want to use that. As this device certainly does have button navigation. If there is none on that page, which I just went to the next. See, so can I go back? No, I can't. So if there is nothing like that, you could go into the uh, settings display. And under display section, you will find option for uh, navigation. So just to kind of showcase this very quickly, we would go to... Display and brightness. And... Uh, oh, come on, where is it? Is that on home screen? Yep, okay, so it's on the home screen. And here we have system navigation. And you can change it from gestures to buttons. So there we go, that about with it. Now, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.